Hello everybody, um, as just explained, that is what I will talk about. I will talk about how search would work in a Gatsby website. Since you just had a very good explanation about why to use Gatsby um, or why to use it in a blog context, I will talk about it in a more general context. So, hello, I'm Harun, and you can pronounce that however you want. It's a quite hard name. So let's talk about Gatsby. Uh, the reason why people use Gatsby, and you saw it earlier, is because it's fast. But why is Gatsby fast? Gatsby is fast because it can preload pages. But having to preload a bunch of pages in advance, that sounds actually quite slow. The reason why it is fast is because it only loads parts of the page, only the data of the page, and doesn't need to do fu full reload. And that's the advantage of a single page app within uh, as a static content as well. But how can it? preload just part of the page. That's because Gatsby on itself has a database built in. A database that you query with GraphQL, which is one of the you know modern buzzwords, almost like AI. Um, let's just do a little bit of an example, because maybe not everybody is confident with this. So in GraphQL, you will first give a little type, and that's a different programming language, markup language almost. Um, so a type, which is basically like an object, and it will have things you can get from that. Then when you query it, you will say the parameters that go there, and then what you want to receive, and then you only receive a subset of that. You don't receive the whole object that we had earlier. You just receive the parts that we need. And that is another reason how we can make really fast websites. But we're not just here for the websites. We're here for the the plugins, because plugins are amazing, especially if you write them yourself. Uh, maybe they're a bit less amazing, but they're still very amazing. So the, the plugins allow you to do multiple things, to, uh, to make new nodes in this GraphQL thing, so with the types and what we just explained. That is very useful for when, for example, you are uh, relying on the file. Uh, those eventually need to be all nodes in the whole tree of things so we can query it efficiently. The same if you want to have your comments or uh, integrated within the thing, or if you want to have um, a different data source like Contentful uh, or whatever you can think of, all of those eventually will make new nodes in the graph that you can query at the end. But that's not the API that we will use because we want to read from those nodes. We want to make a search index. So we'll use another API, which is called onPostBuild. So after all of those uh, nodes have been made, we want to read from them. So we want to read from those nodes, so we want to query. Because uh, that's how GraphQL works. If you want to read, if you want to have a subset, then you do a query. An example query, and that's what uh, even with the uh, plugin for Algolia, is in user land, is what you give as configuration is something like this. For example, you would get all the pages on the website, which is everything you want to search on. You get all of their notes, that's just terminology. You get a uh, specific ID, the text of that node, and uh, the author. This is just an example that could be anything you want. You have multiple options for search, though. You can go uh, with what Brian used earlier, is uh, an in-page search, or you can go for a hosted search. Those are the two main options. Uh, the advantage of an in-page search is, well, you never have to pay because it's only on your page. The advantage of hosted is that you don't need to download everything before you can start searching. Because as you saw, you can have hundreds or thousands of posts. And at that kind of scale, especially if you want to search through the whole content, every single bit that you would add that would be searchable would need to be present on that page already before you search it. Because then we need to have a kind of resource intensive, because search is resource intensive, uh, process to finally search. Especially if you want to add more advanced features, which you have with uh, host, hosted search providers like Algolia, for example, typo tolerance uh, and things like that, uh, as was were described, were limitations of the other search solution. So how are we going to implement this? On one hand, we have Gatsby, which is the a representation of their GraphQL thing. If we immediately then send it all to Algolia, you will notice that there is a problem. Um, every time we make a new build, either we just will add new things 
all the time and then we will never remove the old things which is a bit of a problem because you would still be able to search old things or if you would uh, remove everything while it's building then uh, build again you have another problem is that there will be some downtime in your search and that's something that you'd prefer to avoid so let's go for another solution first you have Grats uh, Gatsby and their graphical thing on one side and you have Algolia on another side on a different level a different index when a user is using your website it will directly go to Algolia however when you are updating your site and doing a new build you go to a different instance then, at the time when you are done building, you move one to the other, and then there was never any downtime, because those are atomic operations that don't need any removal, just moving. So that's about the building. Uh, you can go even more in detail uh, about this. Uh, that you can talk to me that afterward, because that might bore some people. The other part about search is not only making the index, it's all also front-end. A nice solution that we made for this, um, for searching, based on an Algolia index, is called React Instance Search. This is a library that allows you to make uh, search interfaces like this, but of course they can look differently, uh, but you can have a list of filters, you will have highlighting, you will have typo tolerance, uh, pagination, uh, etc. Of course this can look however you want. However, there's a bit of a downside on this, and that's a downside that you uh, have any time you are doing a search on the front end. Exactly the same if it would happen completely on the front end. Is that is when you disable your JavaScript or your JavaScript hasn't loaded yet, then you will end up with an empty page. And we'd like to avoid empty pages because they always add a flash. Even if it happens really fast, you will see a little flash of the content was there, now it's not there anymore, and now it's back because we need to do an extra query. So the solution to that is to add server-side rendering. Gatsby in itself is actually already doing server-side rendering for React the whole time, for every single page. What you want to do is also enable this for your search so that it uh, first does a query on your backend when you're building, and then finally it gives the final HTML. You need to be kind of careful about in which steps you do those things to not end up with a stale uh, pre-rendered search that would immediately be thrown away. But those are uh, things that are quite easy to solve. Another thing to take into account is uh, the settings of your search. So every time you want to add a more advanced feature to the search, for example, which attributes you are actually sending, which things you can search for, or which things can be faceted, like an uh, author or something like that, uh, you would want those settings to be derived from your data, from the data that you send. So in the plugin, there's also a specific uh, part of the code that allows you to, um, based on what your data is, set those settings so that they won't be overridden later. Um, you can even go uh, further with that, potentially. It's not built into the plugin yet. But you could um, derive your UI based on your settings. For example, if your setting says there is, will be uh, the author which is facetable or filterable, then you would also add that filtering widget to the page. As said, there's alternatives to this methodology. First of all, you can go a completely different route, do a front-end search as talked about. The second option is going straight from the source. What I mean by that is imagine your, um, your blog or whatever is coming mostly from a single source, be that um, uh, contentful or maybe something completely different. And it might update at a different cadence than your website itself. Uh, this is especially useful when you're just beginning with your website um, and you haven't set up any of the automatic integrations yet. It might make more sense if you're only doing it from a single source, what you're making searchable, to just go there and make that one searchable, just use a different way. Uh, however, if, you want, if your, ser your site is something that comes from multiple plugins and, and things like that, it becomes very useful to then go and make exactly what users will be able to find on your page also findable with the search. And of course, there's always options to go for different sites, static site generators, 
uh, etc. Can you um, uh, expand a little bit um, on the server side rendering of the search that we're talking about? Mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't quite grasp how can you server render if it's delayed. Um, maybe I didn't quite yes. understand. Uh, so basically what you want to create always when you're what you're automatically creating when you're making a Gatsby side site is a server site rendered uh, React app. So your your main thing is a React app. It's server side renders to some HTML so that it shows the HTML. And then as soon as you add build time, not all the time, well, not with a, a server or anything like that, um, and you want to add in something very similar for your search so that when you are doing your build on Netlify or whatever, you will also then do a query to Algolia to get those results <laughs> and then statically render that search page once. So when you go to the website, you will see the results. It will hydrate front end when your JS loads or you will still be able to see the results. It will not be interactive, but that's expected. Uh, you will still be able to see those results uh, even before the eight, uh, JavaScript loads. How can you predict what the, what the search will, will be? With an empty query. Oh, with an empty query? Yes. Okay. Or um, what you could also do is add in uh, some routing. So if you synchronize your search query to your URL, you could then also pre-render based on those, like just a subset. Uh, that's not something that's built into the plugin or anything like that, but that's technically also possible. Do you, do you think this would be viable to have a static uh, page with uh, an empty query and then having a pre-rendering service that just analyzes the URL and makes the query? Um, that, that I think that doesn't make sense anymore to have a, a static website. Um, having a service I render with a Node.js is uh, simpler. Yes, so but what I especially mean in this case is that you would all, you would never do this for all of your search terms. That would be way too big and be super slow. Uh, however, what you could do is go for the empty query, so your default search page, and maybe a few of your top queries. Uh, and then you make maybe 10 pages with the, the query string, and normally Netlify should be able to handle that, but I need to test out some things there. What is uh, the maximum amount of pages? That you it depends. Uh, I've heard of uh, static sites with hundreds of thousands of pages. Uh, I've personally not really tested the limits that much, but for example, the Yarn website, um, which is similar to NPM, is a static site which is on Netlify. That one has 16,000 pages because it has uh, different languages. It takes a while, but it works. It takes uh, 12 minutes. Yeah. Did you have a special attention on accessibility when you build the uh, JavaScript application, like the algorithm search? Uh, I definitely try to. It's something that um, is not always uh, the easiest to predict, specifically for an interactive search uh, like this one, because in fact, everything that you see about accessibility, like the web area, is assuming that you need to press enter on uh, a form for the form to apply. So, uh, like for example, that depends which, huh? you, you, I see you uh, look a little bit like I'm talking bullshit. Um, <laughs> I try not to. Uh, there are specific patterns that exist, for example, for an autocomplete that work, but for a full page instant search, I've not seen it. I've tried to find, so I try to do my best to make uh, work with like live regions and things like that. But you need to be careful not to over overload a, a screen uh, screen reader user as well because if something happens on every keystroke. So we, we try to do a bit of middle ground, but that's definitely something that's uh, going to improve in the future where we do some more research uh, on that. Can I just ask for yeah? something? Uh, can you reload this page just for... Uh, it's, a s it's an image. I because uh, I noticed uh, many times on Algolia search, yeah. there is an uh, autofocus in, uh, inside the, the search mm -hmm. bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wonder why. It's an option, in fact. So it's not something that we add by default. It's a uh, on the... Yes.
on the user. Usually uh, when you would autofocus a search bar is when the search is the primary mm -hmm. thing for that page. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense in some cases and it doesn't make in some other. So that's why it's an option. If you have a case where uh, a part of the website um, is uh, secured by uh, login, by login yeah. um, how would you manage uh, this? Because I've seen there is an um, odd zero integration with um, Gatsby, but how would you manage that in the indexing of the content with Algolia? You would handle that how you would an handle authentication with Algolia otherwise. And that is by, first of all, you would definitely not pre-render anything because, uh, well, unless uh, you make sure that the part that you pre-render is also secured uh, with dot zero or whatever, uh, but it becomes risky. So you would avoid to do that uh, in case your page ever leaks or something like that. But then the regular way on how you deal with security in uh, a search index context like this is you would uh, create um, there's uh, a separate backend for that because when you handle with authentication, there's always a backend. Uh, and this backend would then uh, generate a secured API key, which is basically a search API key plus some baked in filters that you cannot remove. And when you are uh, indexing your search, you then also add those things as a possible filter. For example, if you can only see your own post or something like that, in this case, they would become a, uh, you would filter, uh, you would make sure that when you're indexing, you add author as something which is filterable. And then when you're making your API key, you um, specifically say, preset this filter on that preset thing that you can filter on.